Sometimes after a long period of questing, you need somewhere to go where you can refuel and refresh before heading back out into the fray. Some of these headquarters are more effective than others. It helps if they are customizable, cozy, and have a meaningful impact on the rest of the game's journey. We try not to confuse these with hub worlds, which are just areas containing portals to other areas. The following 10 games rely heavily on sending you back to these homes away from home, and the experience wouldn't be the same without them. Mother Base is an essential component to Metal Gear Solid V, for better and for worse. Sure, it's fun to have our own cool fort to return to. We can pick its color, knock over our adoring soldiers, and check out all the animals we captured in our private zoo. The place feels like home, and there's a certain gratification in watching it grow. Still, there's a pervasive emptiness. How can this giant complex, with dozens of corners, doors, and floors, hide only one secret room? Meaner still, in the end, Mother Base seems to be a mechanic designed to encourage microtransactions. As much as it warmed our hearts to have D-Dog greet us on its helipad, we couldn't rank Mother Base higher than number 10. It's only fitting that England's greatest detective should have a suitable homestead to match, one that adequately provides for both a living quarters and a place for consultation, deliberation, and investigation. 221 Baker Street, the fabled residence of legendary sleuth Sherlock Holmes, is also the home in the character's last virtual outing, Crimes and Punishments. 221 Baker functions as more than just a linking hub or a port for fast travel. Holmes can perform experiments at his work table, research information in his well-maintained archives, or scan the wardrobe for a crafty disguise. It's also a quiet respite from the constant grind, a place where Holmes and Watson can relax with Toby while enjoying a spot of tea and peeping on the neighbors. Wow, you married, huh? Hey, nothing set in stone yet. What, you don't want to marry your girlfriend? It's not that. I, mean, I love her, but I don't think we need to run out and get married. Feeling a little down? Having trouble sleeping? Did your brunette girlfriend named Catherine find out about your blonde girlfriend named Catherine? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it might be time to saunter down to the stray sheep for a pick-me-up. Catherine's hole-in-the-wall dive bar is the perfect place to relax and catch up with friends old and new after a long night solving puzzles. If you're looking for company, you can catch up with friends, chat up the hip waitress, or dissect the nightmarish riddle speak of the creepy old twins. And if last night's escapades leave you wanting more, a Rapunzel meta minigame lets players polish their box moving skills. Just be wary of checking your text messages in the bathroom stall. We know it's a time saver, but the prospect of contamination is scarier than what you might see in the mirror. Headquarters in the Suikoden series are always dynamic and living places, growing and improving as the player finds more of the 108 Stars of Destiny, the other characters throughout the game. Torin Castle from Suikoden 1 stands out as our most beloved of these mutable mansions. Suikoden castles improve and add functionality with certain new characters the player recruits, making you feel like you're really having a positive impact on the world and your base. The feeling of accomplishment and comfort in these bustling bases makes them feel more like home than many other virtual villas in our memory. Hello, Joanna. Hiya. Every time Joanna Dark loads up a mission in the original Perfect Dark, she does so from her sunny office within the Carrington Institute. Founded by Daniel Carrington, Joanna's boss, the company develops new technologies, commissions secret agents for dangerous missions, and communicates with aliens. There are training rooms if the player wants to complete individual weapon challenges in the gun range or test various tech in a controlled environment. During the game's 15th level, you have to defend the Institute, rescuing hostages and venturing into hangars and hallways you might have otherwise missed. We have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. I'll let you get to it. The way you build your XCOM headquarters shapes the path and success of your missions, and its value can't be ignored. Here, you not only keep an eye on situations across the globe, but manage barracks housing your soldiers, labs to research new technology, and alien holding cells to interrogate captives. All of these facilities require power, funding, and staff, so you have to restrain your eagerness to acquire new abilities and always count the costs. The strategy involved in managing your HQ serves as a solid complement to the intense battles you wage out in the field. This is where all of XCOM's research and development takes place. 
Oh, cool, you're home. Hey, if you're free today, wanna go somewhere? Yukiko's coming too. How about you, Nanako-chan? Wanna come? Um... Huh? I... I can come? Of course you can! The Dojima residence has an incredibly emotional story arc. Upon first arriving in Inaba, Yu shows up at the residence and is initially uncomfortable. The house is a cold, lonely place because Dojima's recently deceased wife has left him and his daughter Nanako devastated. Through time, however, Yu begins to fill that void with his positive attitude and jolly group of friends. Memorable life moments happen there like Yu losing his virginity with a significant other and planting crops with Nanako. In the end, the home becomes a sanctuary and safe haven, a place where you feel secure from the imposing threats plaguing the city. It's just me and Nanako here, so it'll be nice having someone like you around. And now they've trapped us here in the Nexus, in a desperate attempt to undo their mistake. In the demon-infested land of Boletaria, death and terror lurk around every corner. However, the soothing Nexus serves as a retreat from the demons in madness for the unfortunate ones that find themselves trapped there. It binds the souls of all would-be demon hunters so they cannot leave. They can only travel to the five worlds connected by the Archstones. NPCs that you meet throughout the game often find their way to the Nexus and offer new spells and lore. However, not all who make their way to the Nexus are helpful, nor do they have your best interests in mind. It's still a much safer place to be than many others in Demon Souls, and an excellent spot to stop and catch your breath. It's all a travesty if you ask me. Monteriggioni is ruled by Ezio Auditore and serves as his primary base of operations. Ezio helps the townspeople with day-to-day -day activities and invests immense amounts of resources and capital to install shops, barracks, brothels, and a thieves' guild. Upgrading the shops gets you weapons and equipment. The Villa Auditore is the centerpiece here, with multiple rooms and vaults containing key collectibles found throughout Europe. The art room is still one of our favorite places to browse and place meaningful collectibles as an assassin. The town makes a comeback in subsequent games in the Ezio timeline, and the franchise has experimented with other locations you can customize. But this is still our favorite refuge from the age-old war against the Templars. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. The Normandy is a place where Commander Shepard and his or her misfit crew can get away from the ongoing threat of Reapers and the turbulent politics of the galaxy. The militaristic, hard sci-fi design of the ship is surprisingly calming, a feeling further enhanced by the sleek and subdued score. Yet it's far more than a den of quiet reflection. The Normandy is where you bond with your crew, discovering where they stand and what they hope to achieve. Aboard the ship, you can hear Morden sing, have hilariously curt conversations with Rex, or learn about the ongoing struggle of Tali's people. There are so many things going on in Mass Effect's universe, many horrible things, and the Normandy is where the game feels the most human. It's where you go to remind yourself what you're fighting for. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. Enjoy your holiday weekend by checking out our new offices in a special tour on this week's Huber Hype. And if you've got the guts to head back into Bloodborne, don't miss our review of the game's first expansion, The Old Hunters. We'll see you next week for another GT Countdown.